Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of short clips about fundamental speculations. And you know that I'm not a big fan of dark matter and of course we would like to have a more fundamental theory because you may say that the last successful prediction of dark matter was the discovery of Uranus. That means if you detect some anomaly in the gravitational law and then you find something which is responsible. In this case it's a simple piece of matter but I believe that this does not work for the countless anomalies we observe in galactic dynamics. It's just too sophisticated to be explained by a single dark matter particle. And people who really know something about galactic dynamics would agree on that. And you also know, Adam, I'm a fan of variable speed of light, so somehow you want to connect these two pieces. And a very early attempt I made was about 20 years ago. And although I'm not endorsing that anymore, I guess at the very end I failed. There are two interesting aspects. The first thing is that if you apply a Schama-like formula for the gravitational constants, you know that explaining the gravitational constants would be a big goal. And if you try a Schama-like formula to explain that, and if you consider only the mass of a galaxy at the edge of the galaxy that Newton's law 1 over r squared would smoothly transform into a 1 over r law of gravitation and that nicely explains the flat rotation curves we observe. Flat rotation curves means the speed of stars and gases out there in the outer region of the galaxies does not change anymore. So this is a nice aspect but as I said it's hard to reconcile it with the rest of cosmology. And there is just one other nice idea I wanted to tell you and I remembered it because recently a guy, Manuel Urema, published a very interesting paper regarding Mond. So I remembered the idea when I was thinking about bringing variable speed of light together with these ideas of alternative laws of gravity such as Mond in which there is a fundamental acceleration and this fundamental acceleration which nicely kind of explains all dark matter phenomenology is in the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters per second squared and why is this intriguing because it's the speed of light divided by the age of the universe now there is an interesting thought experiment called two single masses in the universe which was first mentioned in this paper and if you think about uh, two planets, it doesn't have to be two elementary particles, but imagine two planets and each planet is measuring maybe the speed of light and discovering all the laws of physics, but you're alone in the universe, no rest of the galaxy, no other galaxies. And then how would you determine if the entire universe consisting of these two points or two planets rotates or not? There is no way to discover that. And that means you have a certain freedom in your physical laws, you could call that a gauge freedom, and you don't know whether it's rotating or not. Now, we are in another situation. We see out there quasars and very far away galaxies. And what about if the universe is rotating? Okay, a rotation faster than the speed of light would contradict relativity. So let's assume the edge of the universe, or let's see the visible horizon, rotates with the speed of light. And you still then have a remarkably small centripetal acceleration responsible for that, which is again in the same order of magnitude as the acceleration occurring in Mond. And well, then you could go ahead and uh, relate the gravitational constant, of course, to the mass of the universe in this thought experiment consisting of just two planets, and that would give you a totally different value for the gravitational constant. I guess we need to find out something about gravity in this direction. The gravitational constant is not just a God-given number, so this is maybe a valuable idea to speculate about rotation of the universe, about a fundamental acceleration, about Mond, phenomenologically describing dark matter very well. But on the other hand, there is no complete theory. So homework for you. Let me know in the comments what you think about. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.